I want to start our time together with a message of gratitude. Each year, the Rainer Scholars Board invites businesses and organizations to provide support to over 500 scholars and their families through sponsorship of our luncheon. In 2014, we have 43 sponsors in the room with the record-breaking three title sponsors. <laughs> During the lunch hour, we will share a slideshow of sponsorship companies and the role they play in building on success. We are beyond grateful for those who invest in scholars with internships, career networks, and full-time employment opportunities. A big thank you to Amazon as our first ever valedictorian sponsor. <laughs> Our most recent Facebook post is worth quoting. We are proud to have Amazon stand beside us at our annual luncheon, honoring our scholars who, when presented with opportunity, choose education as their pathway to new possibilities. Thank you, Amazon, for all you've done to help pave the way. <laughs> Rich and Lori Patton, thank you for stepping up once again. This is the third year in a row you have led the way. Your continuing generosity means so much to our scholars and all of their families. And Brandon Roy, you take the time each summer to come and visit our youngest and hardworking scholars and share your pride and their decision to invest in their education. You see them as role models. This means more than words can even express. Let's have a round of applause for all of our title sponsors. Today we have one of our cohort 12 role models in the house. Angel Cortez, a sixth grader at Madison Middle School, will be our first student speaker. Angel has completed his first summer and an entire school year of Wednesday afternoons in all day Saturday classes. He has one more summer to go before he can truly earn the title of being a Rainer Scholar. Please welcome Mr. Angel Cortez. Good afternoon. My name is Angel Cortez and I am a proud member of cohort 12. That means there are 11 cohorts that have come before me. So remember that every scholar you meet today wearing a college sweatshirt used to be a little kid just like me. <laughs> Maybe a little taller. We are members of a cohort, a group of students who all share a goal of earning a college degree. We support each other, and over time, we become like a family. We call each other for help with our homework. We encourage each other when things get hard, and we complain about the fun we are missing in the summertime. But I'm not the only one working hard. My parents work hard. My dad has two jobs working as a cook. My mom works at a hotel, but she plans a schedule around us kids. My mom is the one who really encouraged me to be a Rainer Scholar. It all started with a letter in the mail. And it wasn't just any letter. It was an important letter that my mom said can change my life. My parents didn't have the same chance to be educated. They both had family responsibilities. My dad comes from a family with 10 children. My mom lost her mother when she was young and she had to grow up fast. But they want something different for me. My mom told me you have to start as a little kid doing the work and making the right choices. At Rainer Scholars, I am learning what it means to work hard and make sacrifices. Ms. Huff told us that sometimes you need to make short-term sacrifices for long-term gain. All I know is I have a lot of homework. <laughs> I've learned I like science. Math isn't going so well, but I'm working at it. I really like to read, but sometimes lit class is challenging. 
You must present your opinion and back it up with evidence from the book. That, so that sounds harder than it is. But I have discovered that even when you might have the wrong answer, teachers at Rainer Scholars help you find the right answer. One of my favorite books we have read is The Pearl by John Steinbeck. Just like Koya Tito in the, in the Pearl, whose father wanted education and freedom for his son, my parents have hopes for my future. I believe my parents want me to have a successful life. I think that means they want me to be happy and don't want me to struggle all the time. I am willing to put in the effort for my education. I have learned how to be organized and I'm getting better at time management. And now I have new glasses so I can see the board in front of the class. And with, <laughs> and with Rainer Scholars, I now have a vision for my future. Thank you. Some of you in the room today are longtime supporters of Rainer Scholars and know the program very well. Others of you are meeting with us for the first time and may be wondering just what is Rainer Scholars? Whether newcomers or veterans who may just need a primer, we want to share with you a brief informative video which seeks to break it down for all just what happens in this four phase 11, 11 year adventure known as Rainer Scholars. Rainer Scholars is about the future. Rainer Scholars changes your perspective. Rainer Scholars has taught me so many things and I've been able to apply those things to my life. To me, Rainer Scholars is a big family. Rainer Scholars supports me. Rainer Scholars is hope given to those unseen. I give myself more confidence in my schoolwork, in my social life. That support system that helps you get into college. The education was key for us as a family. It's helping me prepare and stay on track on my way to college. Rainier Scholars is about fun, friends, and hard work. Perseverance, integrity, and courage. Support, opportunities, and a very strong community. Rainier Scholars is the blueprint to success. Rainier Scholars cultivates the academic potential and leadership skills of hardworking, low-income students of color by creating access to transformative educational opportunities and providing comprehensive support we increase college graduation rates and empower new generations of leaders. I have a goal of being the first one in my family to go to college. The Rainer Scholars 11-year journey begins in sixth grade with an intensive 14-month academic experience designed to prepare students for placement in college prep settings in public and private schools. Spanning two summers and their entire sixth grade school year, scholars study advanced core subjects, learn skills for academic success, and build confidence as high-achieving students of color. As scholars begin to navigate their new educational settings, our academic counseling and support provides a counselor who serves as a guide and mentor. School visits, retreats, and field trips keep scholars connected to each other in a community of support. The middle and early high school years are tough for all young people, but we are there to walk beside them, ensuring students remain on the college pathway. As scholars reach young adulthood and enter our leadership development phase, they are challenged to envision their future. Scholars receive personalized college counseling services, participate in career internships, and build skills through a series of engaging leadership retreats. Each experience brings them one step closer to college and future leadership roles. 100% of Rainer Scholars have been admitted to four-year colleges and universities, with over 90% having multiple college choices. The final phase of Rainer Scholars includes the years of college support. Our team begins work with scholars before their first day on campus and continues through college graduation. Campus visits provide a vital link with a framework of resources and support to ensure college success. Retreats, internships, and career development opportunities help students build professional networks essential for career success and leadership roles. 
As our scholars emerge from college with degrees in hand and confidence in their hearts, they know their gifts and talents are truly needed by this world. And most importantly, choices and opportunities unimaginable to their parents are now considered within reach. The impact we are seeking is deep. It ripples forth from individual scholars into families and ultimately into communities. And it is one which we believe brings much needed change to our world, one degree at a time. It's given me a lot of opportunities that I wouldn't have had. That hard work will pay off in the future. It's just a huge community that likes to help out each other, so it's great to be a part of it. They share that same dream that I wanted for my child, and it's a true blessing. Good afternoon to all. <laughs> Thank you. And thanks so much for being here with us today to celebrate and honor another group of high school seniors who will be heading to an incredible array of colleges around the country this fall, and our second group of college graduates who will be joining us in a few short weeks in the real world. Now, as I have visited with these scholars in recent days, I have wondered if it's crossed their mind that in the excitement of commencement, they are soon going to be trading free food, gym facilities, and beer for rent checks and utility payments on the first of every month. But needless to say, we're excited for them. My name is Sarah Smith, and I am the executive director here at Rainier Scholars. <laughs> um, you can always count on your friends to help you out there. It is such an honor and privilege to be back here again with you this year. While 2013 was our milestone year of celebrating our first cohort of college graduates, 2014 is the year we have focused on building on success, facilitating ever more access and pathways to outstanding educational opportunities for our scholars, while also pursuing new avenues to impact more young people in the community that we work. In 2014, we have scholars graduating once again from colleges around the country, including Stanford, Wesleyan, UW, Columbia, and the University of Pennsylvania, and another group of high school seniors heading off to Dartmouth, Pomona, Emory, Seattle U, Carleton, and beyond. None of, oh. <laughs> thank you. None of these outcomes for scholars were determined by birthright. Each was earned through extensive effort and commitment to a belief in possibility, and we could not be more proud of our students. That's where I thought you all might applaud, so. <laughs> <laughs> Caught me early. So 2014 has also been an incredible sports year for this community. The passion and further brought forth during the greater Seattle area, in the greater Seattle area during the Seahawks Super Bowl run, and our yeah, go Hawks, <laughs> and our collective passion and embracing of the twelfth man identity reminds me of another Northwest sports story, which graced the front pages of the Seattle Times and the airwaves nearly 80 years ago, that of the University of Washington men's crew team which represented the United States at the 1936 Berlin Olympics. Their story returned into the public consciousness this past year through a riveting narrative, The Boys in the Boat, by Northwest author Daniel Brown. In their story, and in their ultimate success of winning the gold medal against some of the giants of international rowing at the time, lie many connections to what I believe form the foundation of our success at Rainier Scholars. So I hope you will humor this aging rower for a few moments as I build a bridge between a 20th century band of country rowers and the story of our scholars, my true heroes of 2014. At the height of the Great Depression, when the vast majority of Northwest residents were struggling simply to meet their basic needs, the grit and spirit of this boat inspired our community to invest in its travel, training, and ultimately its victory. Given 48 hours to raise the funds to send this crew to Germany following its dominance against all other college crews in the country, the people of Seattle, the East Side, the Yakima Valley and beyond came together and made this opportunity for which these boys had worked so hard something they could truly pursue. So too, over the past 13 years, 
through countless acts of generosity by so many of you here in this room, has this community come together and opened up doorways of educational opportunities for the nearly 600 Rainier Scholars who have come through our program. I don't believe that the support of this boat was just about our communal love of a great sports story, a cheering for the underdog per se. It was about something more collective, which went to the heart of our nation's identity. At the time of the 1936 Olympics, it seemed essential, no, actually imperative really, that the U.S. boat win this race on behalf of the concepts of freedom and democracy. To uphold fundamental beliefs in our society, which were under fire in the early Hitler era. I would argue that Rainier Scholars and other successful and effective college access programs are likewise about more than just an individual game-changing opportunity for a given student, but rather are also about the essence of our democracy in this country. I had the good fortune to attend the University of Virginia as an undergraduate, where, as you might imagine, I encountered a few Thomas Jefferson thoughts and quotes. He is, uh, he's, he's important there. None, <laughs> none more profoundly true than the idea that in order for our democracy first to survive and then to thrive, a nation's citizens must be educated. It is essential to our society's future that its young people have access and opportunity to pursue their educational dreams, and Rainier Scholars holds no belief to be more fundamental and sacred than that. Now, back to the boat. This crew, which eventually became Olympic champions, defied the odds from the beginning, beating first their West Coast rivals and then the more established Ivy League crews to earn this Olympic berth, these young men achieved more than anyone ever predicted for them. They were the sons of farmers, mill workers, and dam builders, most of whom were scraping together dollars needed to attend the University of Washington. Fortunately for them, in rowing, one's pedigree and background can only take you so far. When all is said and done, it is the willingness to work beyond what you may think is possible, to push both the body and mind past those preconceived limits and pursuit of excellence, which determines one's ultimate success. So too is it essential in our society, regardless of background or birthright, that we have the opportunity to prove what is possible through hard work. Rainier Scholar students consistently embody the spirit of Joe Rance, a member of that 1936 crew, young people with very humble beginnings who are willing to de demand from themselves the effort and relentless focus needed to earn a college degree. Our scholars are consistently defying the odds as statistics indicate that those students from the lowest income quartile in our country have an 8% chance of earning a college degree by age 24, and those in the second lowest quartile a 16% chance. 8%, 16%, and those numbers become even more staggering when race is layered with income. At Rainier Scholars, the goal is always 100% college graduation, no matter what the odds are. More common threads emerge when one considers the foundation of the 1936 crew's success and what enables us to say with some humble confidence that the Rainier Scholars model works. The Latin root word for competition is compare, to strive together, to make one another better. Our scholars are formed into a cohort from the very beginning to emphasize that in striving together as a whole, in supporting each other in a shared vision around college graduation, all will succeed in their individual efforts and goals as well. Just as was the case with the boys in the boat, none of our scholars do this alone. They are supported by an extended network of family, coaches, teachers, mentors, staff, and others who believe in their capabilities. A group who will let them settle for nothing less than they are capable of, as in the 1936 boat, we ask of them the very best each has to offer in academics, in personal integrity, commitment, and work ethic. We require nothing less than the sweat and toil which great athletic champions bring into the arena each and every day. Our scholars experience shared sacrifice, collaboration, teamwork, and challenge at the youngest of ages. 
And in facing those tests of mind and will, they discover reservoirs of resilience, grit, and determination, which enable them to overcome those immense odds and lead them to once unimaginable future opportunities. As it was with the boys in the boat, so too it is with the scholars in the program. From great challenge and struggle comes significant growth and development of character, which along with the education gained are now parts of themselves which can never be lost. Excuse me for one more minute. The Marco Rubio reference isn't funny anymore. It's out of date. <laughs> but this is my thing, the, the cotton mouth. So anyway, um, in closing, I invite you all to consider the inspiration we can take, not only from the victorious boys in the boat, but more importantly, from the scholars in the program. Their collective example of perseverance, courage, and integrity are at every turn on the pathway to a college degree and a life of leadership and community service can provide each and every one of us with a greater sense of purpose and possibility. I know this has been true for me throughout many a challenging period in my life, and I hope it will be true for you today as you hear from our scholars and parents. Thank you for the gift of your time, your interest in our work, and your investment in the scholars in the program. And now, um, over the years, I've often said that we'll know we've been successful when there's an entire generation of Rainer Scholars graduates who are poised and ready to replace the staff and the board and other community leaders in this town. For that, we'll mark a, town, a time when the cycle has come full circle and we know that a new generation of leaders has been developed. And after visiting in recent days with our next speaker, I now know who my successor will be, and I can begin to daydream about early retirement with the knowledge that all will be well. So please join me in welcoming Cohort 2 scholar, former Garfield Bulldog, and soon-to-be alum of Spelman College in Atlanta, Georgia, Ms. Iselina Campbell Cronin. Thank you. I stand before you in this moment, counting down the days before my college graduation. On May 18th, I will graduate magna cum laude from Spelman College. <laughs> I cannot adequately describe the incredible feeling of accomplishment and the overwhelming gratitude I have for all of the people in my life who cared enough to ensure that I received a college education. As an educator herself, my mother was the first to expose me to the joy that learning can bring. Then, at a very young age, Rainer Scholar saw the potential in what I could become long before I even saw it in myself. In turn, my mom saw the potential in Rainier Scholars to help her realize the dreams she too had for me. By being part of this community, I've been held to high expectations and the best has been demanded of me. I am surrounded by people who believe in me and that belief made, it, made me feel like it was never an option to quit. I remember receiving my acceptance letter from Rainier Scholars. It felt like victory. It was a vote of confidence. It guaranteed I would be challenged in the classroom. And just weeks after finishing fifth grade, I entered a program that would lay the foundation for my future. Now, I'm not going to lie and tell you it was easy. <laughs> like every scholar before me, this experience was a new level of hard. I distinctly remember my first day of class. It was history with Ms. Johnson. And not only was I surprised to get homework on the first day, but I was astonished at the fact that we were assigned a chapter to read by a historian named Howard Zinn an author of college-level works that would open my mind to new historical perspectives. Over the next year, I learned the true meaning of rigor and responsibility. Despite the tears, the Rainer scholars in here know about the tears, <laughs> the overwhelming amounts of homework, and the, challenge of, and the challenge of balancing regular school with Rainer scholars, I never felt alone, as I was surrounded by cohort mates persevering on the same journey. I learned I was capable of more than I ever imagined. 
14 months of academic rigor and high expectations later, a new sense of pride was revealed in my own education. I had developed my own definitions of perseverance and success. I learned that struggle was an important part of the process. Most importantly, excellence was no longer an option. It became the norm. As longtime believers in the premise of public education, my mother and I made the decision for me to attend one of Seattle's most recognized public high schools. I found myself in AP courses at Garfield while I was one of three African American students. And despite drawing on the strength of my Rainier Scholars experience, I suddenly felt like I did not belong. Many fellow students were familiar with the framework and expectations of advanced placement courses, but I was intimidated and nervous and too prideful to ask for help, and my struggle was soon reflected in my grades. I was jeopardizing my college admissions options and scholarship qualifications by struggling in silence. Facing academic probation during my junior year, the message from Rainer Scholars was clear. You have the ability to do this. Take the steps required to change the situation. Be accountable, and we are here to support you. This was a valuable experience that helped bring clarity to one of my future goals. I want to ensure other students like me never feel that they don't believe that they don't belong in a high achieving classroom. I want to make certain that they never feel like they have to choose between being black and smart. Applying to colleges and making the decision to attend Spelman established my pathway to exploring education and the field of teaching. Spelman's mission is to develop women of color to be leaders and global change agents. With excellence as the expectation of all of its students, it seemed quite similar to Rainier Scholars. When my mother and I went to visit Spelman, I knew I was right where I was supposed to be. During my sophomore year, I began observing schools from my field experience. Entering Georgia's schools and classrooms further expanded my awareness of America's educational system. My student teaching experiences exposed me to a reality so shocking that it further confirmed my life's purpose. On my first day of working with a group of high school students preparing for the upcoming graduation test, I realized they had been passed along without foundational skills necessary to scaffold knowledge in every subject. It was heartbreaking to try to change their outcomes in just a few short sessions knowing that they would eventually become part of the 20% of African Americans in our nation without a high school degree, and never have an opportunity to set foot on a college campus. My growing understanding of the root causes of poverty shined the light even brighter on the need for high quality education in our country. Seeing these aspects of education up close might cause some people to seek other jobs but it only furthered my love of teaching and goals for education reform. The summer after my junior year in college, I was one of 40 candidates selected to serve as a summer teaching fellow with Uncommon Schools, a New York-based charter management organization. What I saw in my first hour at North Star Academy in Newark, New Jersey, reinforced my belief that it is possible for students to reach their full potential. As I witnessed children answering challenging math questions, my mind wandered back to my early middle school days. What I saw and learned at Uncommon Schools reminded me of the rigor, high expectations, classroom management strategies, engaged teaching staff and administrators, and a level of excellence that I was surrounded with at Rainier Scholars. I felt at home with every aspect of this high achieving culture. It made me wonder, if the data shows that this type of model works, why aren't we seeing it used more often and for all students? Having been exposed to a high quality education and knowing personally the long-term benefits, I believe it is my hearty responsibility to bring similar opportunities to more students across this nation so that they too can experience the confidence, stability, intelligence, gratitude, and sense of purpose that I feel as I approach college graduation. I'm excited to begin my educational career in a full-time teaching position with Uncommon Schools at North Star Academy in a second grade classroom this upcoming school year.
but I want my work to go beyond one classroom, in one district, and in one state. Public education should represent the same quality and caliber of education as any private school in this country. My goals and objectives include gaining educational and professional experiences that will prepare me to one day hold a position of national educational leadership. It will be my life's mission to see the potential in all children and believe in them long before many of them believe in themselves. I hope to bring that potential out of them, enabling them to surpass the roles which, which society has prescribed for them just as was done for me and so many other students of color in this community by Rainier Scholars. Thank you. I'm so, thank you. I'm so honored to be joined here today by a few representatives of the many Rainier Scholars who will be graduating from colleges across the country this spring. At this time, I would like my fellow graduates to please stand. Nicholas Andrade, Union College Class of 2014. <laughs> Jomika Bland, Agnes Scott College Class of 2014. <laughs> Brittany Carol Rocks, Columbia University Class of 2014. <laughs> Jimena Diaz, Dartmouth College Class of 2014. <laughs> Destiny Franklin, Bates College Class of 2014. <laughs> Austin Nguyen, University of Washington, Class of 2014. Sam Santos, University of Washington, Class of 2014. Berlinda Booth, Seattle University, Class of 2014. Alan Zhang, Occidental College, Class of 2014. And yours truly, Isalina Campbell Cronin, Spelman College, Class of 2014. Thank you. At Rainer Scholars, our partnership with parents and families is key to our success. When families support students through the academic phase and are often the first line of defense when their child wants to quit. When you hear scholars describe the overwhelming amounts of homework, the late night meltdowns, and all the times they cried, you must realize a parent was there experiencing all that drama. <laughs> and I know, I was a drama king, just ask my mom. I'm not sure as a little kid I understood how important her constant support was to my success. But here's what I know today. My mother is my strength, she is my inspiration, she has always had my back no matter what. And I would not be standing here before you today without her being the first one to shine a light on me. Please welcome to the stage my mother, Nicole Strong. Thank you, thank you, and thank you, sweetie. <laughs> Moments like this remind me it's all worth it. Gosh, where did the time go? He grew up so fast. I remember joking with Swade as just a little guy that I was gonna stop feeding him because he was growing up too fast. And his response to me was, Mom, that's what sons do. So my response to him today is, wherever he's at, <laughs> is the things he just described to me are the things that moms are supposed to do. But as a parent of a young man that's ready to take on the world, I have to confess, it's time for him to go. <laughs> it's time. <laughs> and I'm sure all the, soon, all the parents of soon-to-be college students in this room understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> I love my son, 
and I'll do anything for him, but it's time to leave the nest. He's more than ready. I never would have thought, though, that he would be launched into this world with such a strong foundation of confidence, determination, and a vision for his future. From the moment he was born, I worried about the odds stacked against him, the assumptions the world would make, and the limitations that would be placed on him being a young man of African-American descent. To truly understand my hopes and dreams for him, you must know my story. I am the second of two children born to teenage parents that did not beat the odds. My sister and I were raised by our paternal grandmother in the Yesler Terrace housing project on public assistance, and growing up was really hard. I have vivid memories of being left alone at home to watch the clock until it was time to leave and walk to the Metro bus to get myself off to afternoon kindergarten. My seven-year-old sister and I rode the bus together after school, arriving to an empty house as my grandma had to work. She didn't know how to drive, so we walked and took the bus everywhere we went. My world was limited to my isolated backyard, my unsafe neighborhood, and my school. My grandmother had a strict and strong approach to raising children, and encouragement or support were not included. I remember all the ways I was told growing up that I wouldn't amount to much. But I somehow knew better. I excelled in school, and as it seemed, my only outlet. I remember, always, I remember not always feeling safe. I remember struggling to understand why my parents weren't there for me growing up. And I basically spent my childhood in survival mode. As a teenager, it was made clear to me the expectations to take care of myself, to get a job, and move out of the house. I managed to have good grades in school and was one of the only African-American students in honors and humanity classes at my high school. By the time senior year came around, I have been working since I was 14. I had a full-time job. While I heard whispers of my peers discussing life after high school, college plans, and career aspirations, I was, I was on my own and focused on taking care of myself. When you come from a family of extremely limited means, it's like, it's like an unspoken expectation that your future is preplanned. The first of these unspoken limitations for me would be the assumption that high school graduation would be the highlight of my academic success. With the help of a friend, I managed to enroll for a few semesters of community college while working two jobs, eventually deciding to drop out for a year, never to return. I left my hopes and dreams behind as I struggled to make ends meet and to be a responsible adult. My friends often described me as resilient, yet I always felt I had no other choice. And then I became a mom, and everything changed. Having the responsibility of a child, I knew in my heart I wanted things differently. I wanted to do things differently. I wanted my son to have a better life. I wanted my son to feel loved and supported. I wanted him to have opportunities and choices that I didn't have. It felt like my hopes and dreams were born again. But the sacrifices were tough. I had the wisdom of knowing the importance of education, but I also had to make difficult life decisions from the beginning, working long hours and utilizing childcare, choosing to enroll him in public school and trying to supplement his education. I refused, though, to let him fall through the cracks of the educational system. But I felt alone in my efforts, and then came Rainer Scholars. So when Sway was accepted into Reverend Rainer Scholars, my life changed. Suddenly, I was a part of a community who had my back, who had our back. <laughs> I was surrounded by teachers and staff who believed in my child's learning potential and supported my dreams for him to attend college. Through Rainer Scholars, my son gained access to opportunities beyond my wildest dreams. Starting in the academic enrichment phase, he was placed in an environment that challenged and pushed him beyond anywhere I thought him capable of at such a young age. He struggled with the homework load and then pushed through. He actually completed the 14 months with an amazing accomplishment zero unprepared. That means no missing homework assignments and come into class every day prepared to do the work. Now, you know on his earlier comments, based on those, about the tears and the drama, I think we both should share in that proud accomplishment. <laughs> Thank you.
This accomplishment reaffirmed and was a testament in my eyes as to my son's capabilities, and I have been pushing him ever since. From Martin Luther King Elementary for kindergarten through fourth grade, TT minor for fifth grade, Washington Middle School for sixth, university prep for seventh through twelfth, I'm proud to say my son is well on the way to the college of his choice to become a future mailhouse man from Atlanta, Georgia. I couldn't be prouder. When I think of Rainer Scholars, I think of it as an amazing piece that was needed to complete the picture. And I am not the only parent that feels this way. A chair, as chair of the Parent Advisory Council, I have the pleasure of meeting a wide range of Rainer Scholar families, each with their own story and their own struggles. We bond over the gratitude of being a part of a community that provides knowledge, support, and opportunities to change lives while looking forward to what the future holds. Forever grateful to Rainer Scholars. Another community for which I'm grateful has been his school community for the last six years at University Prep. Because Swade is outgoing and social, involved in athletics, and tends to be a leader among his peers, I found myself welcomed by, a network, by networks by U Prep friends and families, as well as Rainer Scholar supporters. I find it humbling that my son has been the one to lead the way and for his bright future to shine a light on me. I believe his journey has just started, and given the tools Rainer Scholar has equipped him with, there is no doubt in my mind that he will live life well beyond the hopes and dreams I have for him. Lastly, I just have one more thing to share with you guys, and that's a comment I heard my son make about Rainer Scholars. When speaking at a recruitment meeting a year or so ago, he shared with the audience that uh, the 14 months, that even though the 14 months was the most challenging thing he had ever been through, and even though he had to give up AAU basketball for a whole year, that he honestly felt, and he did say honestly, you guys, that, Rainer, that the decision to become a Rainer Scholar was the best choice he had ever made regarding his education. Now, just between me and you guys, do you really think he had a choice in that? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Mine is but one story of the impact Rainer Scholars has had upon students and families. The video you're about to watch tells another powerful and inspiring story, which reminds us all of the power of hope. Do you know anyone in Seattle who you could live with? The DSH worker asked. I turned to my left, seeking comfort from my sister. She stared at me and her forehead crinkled. Who would raise me and my sister? Why did our mom do this to us? Why don't we have a normal family where the mother and father don't leave their children for weeks to fend for themselves? The social worker glanced up at me and my sister. How about Darlene, your younger sibling's grandmother? When the children came to live with me, basically I wanted these kids to break the cycle. It had gone on and over and over, and it was the history of their family, and it was so destructive. I thought, well, if I can do anything, you know, I could maybe have them get a good education. Yeah, let's play a game of cards. There you go. Right. Tiata. There was something special about this girl. She would look at things different, which would help me to look at things different. It's a good game to practice our math. So. I am Tiada. I go to the Northwest School. I am in the 12th grade. Nine years ago, when we moved in with our grandmother, um, we didn't know her back then. She was, of course, scared as well, but she didn't show it as like much as like we were just like, what's going on? She was very welcoming and like I felt comforted. It was a very troubling time at the beginning. The way they came into my life was very traumatic for them. CPS decided to take them uh, from the home that they were living in and they were going to split them up. I did not want them split up at all. 
The whole idea with the kids was stability and to give them a safe haven. My grandmother is definitely an amazing person. Hope means a lot. I remember like hoping for something different, knowing that like there would be something different if I just kept like working and trying hard. I needed some direction and some help and some security that what I was doing was I was on the right track with all of this because I didn't know if what I was doing was right or wrong. And then Rainier Scholars came along. I first heard about Rainier Scholars the spring of my fifth grade year. We got a letter in the mail. Didn't know what it was, never heard of it before. Just thinking, what, a, what an awesome idea this is. And why us? I think what motivated me was just like going forward and seeing what happened, seeing other kids do it and go through it. And like, I've always been really competitive. It was pretty stressful the beginning part because you have this like very high bar in order to like reach like academically. And so I thought that was like very intimidating. No idea what it entailed. Late nights with Tiada while she was crying, trying to encourage her, hoping it would work. I think what I learned was you're going to fall down and make mistakes, but also that there's other people out there who've done the same exact thing as I have and have made it through and they're perfectly fine. They just embraced our whole family. And uh, from the, the teaching, support, uh, encouragement, uh, the teachers caring about them and caring about how I was doing, we stuck with it because it was, it was an opportunity of a lifetime. And the more we were involved, the more we realized how lucky we were. When Tiada got uh, into the Northwest School, with their support, plus Rainier Scholars, I mean, anything was possible, because Tiada had the work ethic to achieve it. I was just knowing that there was a possibility for her to really tap into a good college education, which I never had it, my family never had it, her family never had it, and it gave us the hope to go for it. I want to make Darlene proud. I want to show my little brothers and sisters that you can achieve more than what people expect of you. I want to make my mark on the world and share my story. When I applied to Dartmouth, my like initial feeling was like, just why not and just submit my application, see what happens. That was actually really good. When she got accepted, to Dartmouth was quite an adventurous night. She got a letter. She grabs my arm and says, you got in, you did it. And I'm like, what? And I look over and the first words, congratulations. She just freaked out. She was so excited. I was excited. The kids were all excited. Going to Dartmouth is like, it's amazing. I'm really excited. My hopes for Tiara have been uh, fulfilled. In my pursuit of higher education, I fly past the snares that have trapped my family in a continuous cycle of drug abuse and poverty. And I hope that one day a little girl from the Yakima Reservation who felt insignificant and lost can finally have a sense of place at an institute that will accept her for what she is, a miracle. Tiada, I'm not sure, or Tiada, I'm not sure where you are in the audience. Hello, there you are. Well, Tiada, you're so much more than a miracle. You're an inspiration to all of us. So thank you very much for sharing your story. Hello, my name is Dianca Lanier. 
and it is my honor to serve on the Rainier Scholars Board of Trustees. I say it's my honor because I've come to believe that Rainier Scholars is simply about service in the context of hope and faith. Hope in what is possible through the power of education and faith that every student is capable of great things. Now, in just a few minutes, less than five, I promise, we'll, we'll celebrate and recognize a few of these great achievements as our high school seniors announce their college decisions. Now, this is my favorite part of the program, and I hope that your schedule permits you to stay and honor this defining moment for our scholars. But first, as your table captains begin to pass around those envelopes on your table, if they haven't already, I'll ask you to reflect on what you've heard today. And as you can surmise through the story shared, and particularly that faithful journey experienced by Tiada, her siblings, and her grandparent, faith and hope are an important presence here at Rainier Scholars. You heard Angel mention a letter, and he said not just any piece of mail, but a letter his mother had faith would change their lives. In fact, every letter of acceptance sent to over 60 new students each year represents an 11-year commitment, a financial commitment made by Rainier Scholars this commitment sets forth, sets in motion faith in at least three different ways. First, faith in a scholar. When a young man like Swade, or can we call you Swadey, <laughs> dares to believe that he belongs on a college campus, even though no one in his family has ever earned a college degree, he sees a bright future he sees himself as a leader in making a difference. Faith in the future of a family. When an incoming fifth grader, Angel, becomes determined to earn a college degree, it will in no way, no doubt, impact generations.